you. We bless you. We honor you. You are so good. You are so kind. You are our Savior. You are the joy of our salvation. We thank you this morning because it was you that woke us up. It was you that started us on our way. It was you, oh God, that gave us strength and breath. It is your breath that is in our lungs, which is the reason why we are able to inhale and exhale this morning. We thank you, God, for the rain that is coming down. We thank you for the cool breeze that we're able to feel. We thank you, oh God, because you are sovereign in all of your ways. You are master. You are king. You are our deliverer. You are our savior. You are the strength. You are our breath, God. We thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it, God. We thank you because we do have activities and use of our limbs. We thank you because we have our senses that are in full operation this morning. God, we thank you because we are not laying in a bed and somebody has to pick us up and move our legs and our arms, but we willingly and voluntarily can lift our arms and worship to you this morning. We thank you, God, because we can bend our backs and worship to you this morning. We thank you, God, because we can open our mouths and give you praise. We thank you, Lord, that we are not mute. We are not deaf. We are not dumb. We thank you, oh God, because of your goodness. We thank you because of your richness. We thank you because of your mercy and your grace and your compassions that are new again for us this morning. We're so grateful that we don't have to rely on the compassions and the mercy that we received on yesterday just in case we have a, some uncleanness in our hearts today. But today, you granted us with the benefit of new mercy and we say thank you. We thank you that we have the benefit of life this morning. We thank you that we have the benefit of, of being able to breathe this morning. Thank you, oh God. And with the breath that you have given us, we will bless the Lord at all times. Your praise shall continually be in our mouths. We thank you, oh God, because somebody has to worship you in a cave. Somebody has to hide the fact that they even have relationships with you but because we are here and because we have freedom and because we have liberty we will bless the Lord at all times we will lift up our hands and worship you we will open up our mouths and give you glory let the fruit of your lips praise him this morning hallelujah 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 thank you oh God somebody is laying in a hospital bed this morning. Somebody is sleeping in a grave this morning. There's a mother somewhere that instead of planning a birthday party, she's planning a funeral. Thank you, oh God, for life. Somebody got in their car this morning and the car went off the road. Somebody had a head-on collision. There's a train operator that got on in to work and the train derailed this morning. The bus driver could have fallen asleep that you rode on this morning, but today, God, God, we say thank you, 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 oh God, thank you, Jesus. We never have to invite you in this house because one thing we are sure of is that the presence of the Lord is here. And because your presence is here, where your presence is, there is fullness of joy. And so this morning, regardless of what we have going on, regardless of what we're feeling in our bodies, regardless of what is going on in our minds, we say hallelujah. We will bless you, oh Lord. We will bless you, oh Lord. We will bless you, oh Lord. There is nobody like our God. We serve the only true and living God. He is the living Savior. He is not dead. He is alive. And because we serve the risen Savior, because we serve a God that is alive, we lift our hands today, oh God. We thank you for what you are going to do we thank you oh God for the word that will come forth 
that will prick somebody's heart today. We thank you, oh God, for salvation for somebody today. We thank you in advance for deliverance. We thank you in advance for healing today. We thank you in advance for setting somebody free. We're not going to wait until it happens, but we thank you in advance. We praise you, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Out of our bellies, we bless you. Out of our bellies, we bless you, oh God. Out of our bellies, oh God. We thank you this morning because you are our good, good father. You are our good, good father. You love us so much, oh God, that every hair that is upon each one of our heads is already numbered by you. We thank you, oh God, because you made us a little lower than the angels. You made us heirs and joint heirs with she, oh my, oh call my shit, take care. Just in case you were wondering who you are, you are heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are somebody in the kingdom. So it doesn't matter who said you are not. Jesus said you are. Oh my shit, came my time. Oh, glory, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. So this morning, oh God, yes, we have a list of stuff that we can ask you for, but in my belly, I feel a worship. In my belly, I feel a praise. In my belly, I just want to lift up my hands. I just want to bend my back before you. I just want to glorify you, oh God. You said if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And so we lift you up this morning. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up, oh God. We bless your holy and your righteous name. You are God. You are God. You are God. You are Savior. You are healer. You are deliverer. You are way maker. You are provider. You are my strength. I call my Satan. Am I your mercy? Let's go straight into the presence of God. Come on. He's already in this room. Come on. Let's acknowledge him. Let's acknowledge him. Come on. Take this moment and forget about yourselves and concentrate on him. Come on. Forget about your problems and concentrate. Come on. Forget about your problems. Forget about your illness. And let's concentrate on him. Let's worship him. Come on. Let's take 30 seconds to him. And why don't you push right in? Come on. I'm not going to lead you. Come on. Let God lead you in his presence. Come on. Oh. Come on. Minister Will. Minister. Minister. He wants to do something this morning. Come on. Let's let the Let's raise a praise. Come on, Minister Mitchells. Come on. Oh. Come on, 30 more seconds. Come on, push right in there, Pilgrim. Come on. This is where miracles can happen. Come on. Push right in his presence. Oh. We give you glory. Your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. You, oh, 
It's strong in our arms. So we pour. Come on, why don't you pour it out? It's his breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Let's break it up. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour. Pour it out. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour. Let's do more time. Play it tune. It's your. It's your. In our lungs, come on, raise it, pick up. So we. So breath in our lungs, so we pour. One more time. It's so breath in our lungs, so we pour on our breath. Pour it out. It's so breath in our lungs, so we pour. One more time. While the music plays, why don't you lift your hands in the presence of a holy God? And why don't we go out this present this morning? Come on. I know a lot of things try to rob you of your focus this week. I know a lot of things try to rob you of your affection of, of our Savior. But if you can take 30 seconds and forget about yourselves and why don't we concentrate on Him? Come on. Come on, why don't we concentrate on Him? I said, why don't we concentrate on Him? Come on. Let's go for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. For being honest, a lot of things, every time that I breathe in, every time that I step into a place where I know he's there, somehow it, I, I, I forget about what happened this week. And, and, and every time that I breathe in and air fills my lungs, somehow I forget about how many times that, that I felt confused. With, I, I forget about how many times I almost slipped into the person. Somehow, I forget about how many times I got a bad doctor's report. And when I get in his presence, yeah. I lift my hands and acknowledge a holy God. Yeah. Yeah. I lift my hands and acknowledge him because it is only because of the Lord's mercies that I wasn't consumed. It's only because of his grace that I'm not six feet under. So excuse me if I make too much noise. Excuse me if I bend my knee. Excuse me if I turn my back. Excuse me if I ignore you. Excuse me if I... Because every time that I think of the goodness of Jesus and everything he's done for me, my soul cries out. My voice cries out. My hands are lifted. My mouth is open. Somebody, if you're thinking about his goodness like me, why don't you let, you, let your soul cry out? Come on, I said, let your soul cry out. Come on, pilgrim. I said, let your soul cry out. Don't think about it. Let it cry out. Come on. Don't think about it. Let your soul cry out. So excuse me. If this doesn't seem like a regular program, but sometimes I can't help that my soul cries out. And this, this is not just something that happened when I stepped here, but when I woke up this morning and I thought about everything that wasn't right, somehow, right after that thought, I also thought about that I was still breathing. Because I thought about if I'm experiencing everything that's bad, I'm still experiencing something. And there are people who are not experiencing anything at all. So even in my affliction, I can still be grateful because if I'm breathing, if I'm experiencing the bad, that means that he touched me to experience something. And certain people aren't experiencing anything. So when I get in the presence of God, even though I might be afflicted, even though things aren't going the way that I wanted to go, I can lift my hands because I can still experience something.
so well right now but I'm still grateful that I can experience something Father we thank you for another opportunity some people didn't even wake up this morning but Father we in Pilgrim know that we that we are grateful for just one more chance I said, we in Pilgrim are grateful for just one more chance. One more chance. One more opportunity. If you are grateful for the opportunity to be the house of the Lord this Sunday morning, why don't you put those hands together? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, Pilgrim. We know what to do now. And as your hands are clapping, why don't you fill your mouth with praise? Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Willie. Why don't you fill your mouth with praise? Come on. Come on, while your hands are clapping, why don't you fill your mouth with the praises of God? Come on. I said, why don't you fill your mouth with the praise of God? Come on. Why don't we fill this room with the praises of God? Come on. Come on, I said, why don't you fill this room with the praises of God? What that means is just tell him who he is. Come on. You're excellent. You're mighty. You're faithful. You're righteous. You're holy. You're consistent. You're loving. You're perfect. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence that's already in this place. We thank you, Lord, that we are creating a space for you to dwell. Father, your word declares that you abide in the praise of your people. So, Father, I pray this morning that you would live in our praise, that you would abide in our praise. Father, build your home in the space of our worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Come on, let's clap my hands, church. Come on, clap those hands in the presence of Almighty God. Come on. There's a simple song that says this. I'll sing like there's nobody listening but you. And I'll dance like there's nobody watching but you. You are the center My hope, my treasures are found in you I'll sing your praises forever My love, my life, I give to you Sing, I'll sing like this I'll sing like this Nobody listening but you We have an audience of one this morning I'll dance like this Nobody I'll watching Just an audience of one, and I worship. I worship with my life. I will give my all, give my all to this. Let my focus is to you. Sing, Jesus, Jesus, you are my center. My hope, my treasures 
Forever. My love, my all the time. Oh, sing Jesus, Jesus. You my hope, my hope, my treasures are found in you. I'll sing your praises forever. My love, my life. Let's do one time. Oh, sing Jesus, you are, you are my hope, my hope, my treasures. And I will sing your praises forever. My, my love, my life, I give to you. Oh, you can build your home on my worship. And I'll stay right here where I'm welcomed. You can build your home on my worship. And I'm staying. Yes, I'll stay right here. You can build your home on my words. Yeah. I'll stay right here where I'm well. You can build your home. Build your home on my words. Yes, I am staying. I'll yes, I'll stay. I'll stay. See, you can build. You can build your home on my words. Yes, I'll stay. I'll stay right here where I'm Lord, you can. Yes, I'm saying, yes, I'm saying right here, yes, you can build your home. Yes, I'm saying, yes, Lord, you can build. Oh, yes, I'm saying, yes, I'm saying right here, yes, I'm staying, yes, I'm staying, yes, I'm staying. I'll stay right here, yes, in your prayer. Yes, I won't move. Yes, I won't move. Yes, I'll stay right here. Yes, I'll stay right where you are. Yes, draw me nearer. Yes, bless you, Lord. Yes, draw me nearer. Yes, bless you, Savior. Yes, I'll stay. I'll stay right here. Draw me near. Oh, nearer, bless you. Yes, I am staying. Yes, I'm staying right here. Yes, I'm staying. Yes, I'm staying right in your presence. Yes, I'll stay right here. Yes, I'm staying. Yes, I won't move. Yes, I'm staying. I'll stay right here. Yes, I'll worship. I'll worship. Yes, I'll worship. I'll stay right here. Yes, I'll worship. When it's fullness of joy, I'll lift my hands. I'll worship. I'll worship. Yes, I will worship. I'll stay right here. I'll worship. Oh, I'll worship. Oh, I'll say. I'll stay right here. You can build your home on my worship, and I'll stay right here where I'm welcome. You can be the home on my worship, and I'll stay, I'll stay right here. You can build your home on my worship, I'll stay right here where I'm welcomed. You can build your home on our worship, I'll stay, I'll stay right here. We won't move. We'll stay right here. 
so many things try to draw us from your presence. Oh, but I'll stay right here. I will hold on to the horns of the altar. Oh, I'll stay. I'll stay right here. Father, we worship you in your presence. Because it is in your presence that there is fullness of joy. In your presence we find everything we need. Oh, 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 oh,
to do. Let me put our hands together if we love to worship Jesus this morning. On behalf of our senior pastor, Bishop Deborah Crow, our executive pastor, Emil Washington, and the entire Pilgrim Church family, we greet you and we welcome you to our morning worship service. Thank you so much for being here today, for fellowshipping with us, and we pray that there will be something said or done during this service that will be a blessing to you and that will encourage your heart. We know that this is the day that the Lord has made and we want you to rejoice and be glad in it. And we also know here at Pilgrim, because we are a word-believing church, that today something good is going to happen for you. So if this is your first time visiting us by um, in person or by social media, please don't let it be your last time. We thank you so much for coming. Enjoy the service. Please come again, and may God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Can we put our hands together all over the place and just salute the Lord with the praise? Do you mind just opening your mouth and just telling God thank you? Just telling God hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that I made it just another day. People are prophesying to your week. The way I live, I'm just grateful for another day. Anybody just grateful that God is a keeper? Even when you don't want to be kept, he's a keeper. We bless that time. We bless the Lord right there. This next shout is God, you kept me. God, you kept me. Lord, you just kept me. Would you prophesy to your neighbor something good? I, I wish that would have triggered. I wish that would have. You, you may have said it to the wrong neighbor. Say it to the person on the other side of you. Something good. Oh, if you know you've been in line or teach for a miracle, I dare you shout like you believe. That something good is in your bank account. Something good is in your bloodstream. Something good is at your address. Hey, hey, hey. I need a church that'll praise God in advance. Don't you be a lazy church and wait for it. I'm praising him because he said so. Jan, because he said so. Courtney, that's where my faith is this season. Not about what it looks like, not about an affirmation. It's just because she said so. Anybody else living with that type of faith? I don't have the money for it. I don't have the support for it. But because he said so. Oh, Because he said so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at your neighbor and say it is so. Because he said so. Tell somebody who's been through something, Serena, it is. It is so. 
because he said so. God help me. It is so. I ain't got to lay hands. I ain't got to prophesy. It is so because he said. They don't have to want you to have it. You don't have to need it because he said. Because he said, no good thing will he withhold from you. No good thing will he withhold from you. If you walk upright, no good thing will he withhold. Because he said, because he had to, get up, be upset. Watch it, Kirby, watch it. Hey, hey. I need to do my assignment. Come on, my sake, Because he said so. Not because of what it looks like, but because he said so. My marriage is going to work because he said so. My bank account is covered because he said so. And I'm not talking about prophetic word, I'm talking about his word. For he shall supply all my need. He said so. According to his riches and glory, he said so. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He said so. Okay. I believe his word. Serena, I believe his word. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal. That means that I don't fight against you. That's what the word says. I gotta go, I'm ready. Look at your neighbor one last time and say it is so because God said so. Now release a praise like you. Now release a praise because he said so. Here's your confirmation. God said so. Here's all you need. God said so. Ooh. Thank you, prophetess. Because when a prophetess dance, it steals and it is so in the building. When a prophet shouts, it steals a word in the building. Thank you, Adrian. It's so serena. It's well in my soul. It's well in my mind. It's well in my heart. It's well on your job. It's well in your marriage. It's well in your money. It's well. It's well in your morning. It's well in your noonday. It's well when you go to bed at night. Baskets, please. It's so. It's so. And it's working for my good. That's what he said. It's working on my behalf. Yeah, 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 yeah. I blow the wind of change or whatever you need moved in your life. Thank you, Lord. That word is for me. Bad news after bad news. But God said it's working. Only God can make bad news work for you. May strength be your portion this season. May a relief be your portion this season. May the fresh wind of God be your portion this season. May you breathe better. May you, may you live better. May you move better. May every crooked place be made straight. May your testimony be, God did it. He honored his own word. 
And when he could see no one else greater, he swore upon his own self. That's how this is happening. God swore upon his own. You better praise him. You better praise him. It's working. Every hard place is melting. It's working. My praise secured my future. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the release happen now. 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 Thank you, Lord. May the release and come up say, oh, excuse me, I'm talking to myself. May the release happen now. Now, now, now. Now, now, now. Praise him, Courtney, for the relief of God. I don't know. I feel a Pentecostal type. Ah! May the stress be over. today. Sister Benton, do me a favor, please. I, I really don't have. The woman standing behind you with the red hat on, would you just put your hand in her belly and just scream, it's over, it's over. It's over. The pain of that thing is over. The struggle of that thing is over. The struggle of the, 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 the struggle of that thing is over. I prophesy that you'll never see the demons you saw before, the devils you saw before, the enemy you saw before. I wish I had a church who would believe God for a season of all that. It's over. It's over. It's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. This next shout is for victory, Serena. This next shout is for victory. Kayla, I have victory. I have victory. Whatever she needed, it's already at her house. Okay. Whatever you need, God said it's already at your house. Go home and open the mail. Watch this. Go home and open the mail. Watch this. Go home and open the mail. Watch this. Whatever you need. Eh, 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 eh. Somebody just release a shout of praise right there and we're moving. Do it again, do it again. Yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God, yes, God. Get up, scream till it comes out of your belly. 
It's bubbling up. I dare you scream one more time. We're moving. Artis, it's for you. Artis, your name is on it. This next shout gets you what you need. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Because he supersedes my emotions and my feelings and puts me in a place where I have to do what he has called what he has given me permission to do someone just shout I love the Lord you have no idea but that's the thing that has kept you in place not the church you go to but the fact that you kept loving God you had some days where you had to cry but you kept loving God wait that's maybe Maybe that's just my testimony. Even when I wanted to give up, I kept loving the Lord. Finance committee is in place. Finance committee is in place. The ushers are walking. Please, I want to move out the way. If you need an envelope, please lift your hand. You don't have to move from there. Because offering is still a form of worship, I promise you. You can stay right there. In fact, if you put a praise on your offering, watch what God does. If you attach a praise, hallelujah. If you attach a praise to your offering, watch what, watch what God will do to your money. If you attach if you attach a price to your offering, watch your seed grow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for making it work for me. Thank you for the... Sh I know it sounds crazy, but I've been... I've been in a season of extreme stretch faith. This is going to be the best season of my, of my life. You don't have to worry about me another day of my life. Watch what God's going to do for me. Hey, kiss your boss, hey, hey. Sorry, I just hit the bus. If you're giving at this time, please stand. Keep it right there. We're going we gonna to praise God and give this time. And watch the finances of this church be stressed. Watch the finances of the giver be stretched. With your seed held high. With your seed held I need more of you to give. Get something in your hand. And Father, we give you praise over our seed. We prophesy growth over our seed. We present a hallelujah over our seed. We present a thank you, Jesus, over our seed. Don't just bless the gift, but Lord, I dare you to bless the giver. Stretch their seed. Make it more than enough in this season. We love you and we bless your name forever. We give your name the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now come with the praise. Come with the praise. Come like you're happy to give. to see you, Jerry. Love you. This is my season of increased seed. As long as I'm giving, God can't get back. Courtney, prepare yourself. Thank you so much. While the offering is going out the door, would you just shout, I believe it? You think your seat is on the way? 
seeds to be counted. Your seed is on the way to make provision for you. Now believe it. Shout like you believe. Thank you, Sister Brenda. You, you believe God. I believe God. I'm moving out the way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm moving to Mexico. I'm moving to Mexico. Uh, I'm moving. I'm moving. Oh, to Mexico. I'm trying. I'm moving. I'm trying to move, but there's a turnaround in the building. Ah! There's a wheel of shift in the building. That's God. I'm going home with the understanding that it is so. Because God said so. Hey. Live with that all week. It is so. Serena, it is so. Because God told you so. Not because he told your mama. Not because he told your father. Because he told you so. He'll keep his word too. He'll keep his word to me. Serena, he'll keep his word. Some of us are messed up because we're taking other people's interpretations of our word. But what did God say to you? Say to you. What did he say? Not for you to prophesy to the nations, but what did he tell you to do about you? Okay, this, this Saturday. What did he tell you? Lord God, he is dealing with me in this. Thank you, Lord. What did he tell me? Me. About me. Okay. Um, what did he say? Don't let nobody trick you out of what he said. What did he say to you? He'll keep his word. He'll keep his word. It'll be opposite of what everybody believe you can do, but he'll keep his word over you. Okay. Please. Josh, his word is still his word. Over your entire seed, his word is still his word. Don't worry about what the doctor said. What did God say? What did God say? Well, be careful about that. I believe it stuff. Cause that that type of stuff can move a can move mountains. I believe it can move a mountain. You believe God, right? He don't have to even give you the finances. He'll move the mountain. He'll just do it. Because he said, his word will never return unto him void. When he speaks a word, it's already accomplished. It is up to the manifestation to catch up with what he said. Thank you, Lord. Mother Tucker, praise God. Good, I like her. Okay, we got to go, please. I have to move. He said it. He said it. That's for those who are wondering if he said it. He said it. He said it. There, there's your confirmation. Confirmation. He said it. He said it. It is what it's what you heard. It's he. You heard right. You heard right. It is what he said. Mm. God, that was for me. Thank you, Lord. It's what he said. Put your hand on yourself and say, "I heard you, good God. I heard you, good God." This Saturday, please, I have to move. This Saturday, the men are going out bowling. Please see Deacon Stefan. If you can get the money today, we need the money today so that we can do what we have to do this week. Um, we almost lost our arrangements, but if you guys help us out, those of you who are going, it's $65. Please see Deacon Stefan. Um, those who want to participate in the mac and cheese challenge, we're filming it next week. Please see um, Quan. I don't think he's a deacon, but Quan Williams at the altar. He'll take your name. Uh, I heard from a lot of people who wanted to participate. We want all of you, so please see Quan. 
and we'll set it up with you. Thank you so much. One last time, someone shout, it is so. Because God said so. God said it. And it is so. How many women under the sound of my voice believe that you are worthy of restoration? No matter what the doctor's report says, no matter what your bills say, you are worthy of restoration. Listen, I'm here for the final Nailed It announcement. March 15th through March 17th is our women's conference, Nailed It 2024. Let's make some noise. Consistency is good. I believe God is pleased. Our theme for this year is the restored women. How many of you guys are expecting restoration? Listen, if you haven't registered, February 25th, shout February 25th. That's the last day. That's the last day to accept all payments. So many of you have paid in full. So many of you have put deposits down. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But February 25th is the final day we are accepting any payments. We want to get everything in in a timely order. Amen? Now, for you guys who want to register, there is still time. If you are 18 and up, registration is 150 if you are 11 through 17, registration is $50. And for the baby girls, 10 and under, registration is $25. So we will be sitting in the front after service. If you want to register, if you just want to put your name down and you are believing God for a financial miracle before February 25th, come see us. You can register. Now, for the online audience, you can come on in too. Listen, again, March 15th through March 17th, if you are a virtual viewer, you can contact our church office at 718-452-5180. If you believe in a good email like myself, it's pilgrimchurch5180 at gmail.com. Won't you put in the subject, Nailed It 2024? Let us know that you want to attend. You want to pay over the phone. You want to send your money via Zelle. We will have someone from the church staff contact you so you can be included. Listen, we have two dynamic speakers for this year. Friday night, Friday night, we have Pastor Andrea Hudson. She is a powerhouse. She speaks at so many different women's conferences. So I know that the Lord will speak to and through her for us. And Saturday at noon, we have Pastor Vivian Jacobs. They call her Lady V. She is from the Midwest. She is a dynamic speaker. She is a mentor. She is a personal development coach. She's a wife. She's a mother. But most of all, she's a woman of God. And Sunday, we know God will do what he does consistently. So every woman under the sound of my voice, won't you register? Please make plans to attend. Bring your daughters, bring your nieces, bring everyone. And we know that God will do the unimaginable. the glory we worship you our Lord you are worthy to be praised we give you
unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. You've called us together today. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would have your way. We ask, God, that you would dismiss every distraction, the spirit of heaviness, and give us the oil of joy. We surrender and we submit. Many times we bring our issues into your presence, God, knowing that you are the one that can deliver. And so today, God, we ask that you would just have your way. We thank you for all that you've done and everything that you're going to do. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Pastor Email, musicians, our presidents. And to you, my father's children, we greet you in the greatest name that we know. For there is no other name under the heavens where we can be saved but by the name of Jesus. The Bible declares, Mother Wilson, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So I behoove each and every one of you to know Jesus. Many times we, 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 we preach the gospel of faith. We say, believe God for this and believe God for that. But I want to remind you that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it means nothing. I can prophesy all day. Pastor Email can prophesy all day. We can lay hands on you, cover you with all. You can run, jump, scream, and shout. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're living beneath your privilege. And the only thing, that, the only way that things are going to happen Happen for you is that you have to believe and you have to believe and you have to believe I don't care what it looks like believe I don't care what it feels like believe because there is a blessing from the Lord that maketh rich and it addeth no sorrow I thank God today for the opportunity to stand before you and to declare his word do you have my thing The scripture today comes from Mark chapter number nine. Thank you. Mark chapter nine. Mark chapter nine, beginning at the 17th verse. And here begins the reading of God's most holy and righteous word. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake unto the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground 
and was swallowed, wallowed for me. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it casteth him into the fire and unto the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to use for a thought today and tag this subject, Believing Matters. Believing Matters. This account before us is similar to the account in Matthew 17 and Luke 9. While they are similar, there are some slight differences in the details and wording, but they share the same core thought of the healing of the boy. The passage recounts an incident where a man brings his demon-possessed son to Jesus. Disciples seeking to help, but the disciples are unable to cast out the demons. Jesus then arrives and questions the father about his faith. The father expresses his belief, but also admits his doubts, asking Jesus to help him to overcome them. And Jesus responds by healing the boy, emphasizing the importance of faith and the power of holding on or over overcoming your challenges. So my thought again today is believing matters. We do know that this text began uh, when Jesus was in the mountain of transfiguration. He comes down um, from the mountain with Peter, James, and John, which means that the other disciples were already down at the end of the mountain when he came down. So he comes down from the mountain and he sees the people questioning. So he asks them what's going on. Why are you debating? Why are you questioning? Why are you talking? And the man from the crowd comes out and says that I've asked these disciples to heal my child. He explains what's going on with them and he expresses what's happening with them and he asks them for healing. Um, the Bible says that they could not heal this boy. Uh, he comes down and finds a conversation going on about something that the leaders of the church, that the followers of Jesus, that those that follow Jesus and knew how he worked, he comes down from the mountain and find his disciples in a conversation with the man that's requesting help. He comes down to the leaders those that went with Jesus, those that knew Jesus, those that prayed and saw Jesus act, he goes down and finds that these disciples are unable to heal a boy. Jesus says to them, now he speaks to the generation of them because of their unbelieving faith. Um, many times uh, we do some things that, that, that we should be able to do because of just who we are associated with. Y'all can say amen with that. Sometimes we're associated with people and that gives us the favor that we wouldn't ordinarily have. The Bible tells us in, in Hebrews chapter 11 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith brings hope into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Faith is a powerful force that enables us to trust in the promise of God and believe in the unseen. It encourages us to have confidence in that what hope for and to hold on to our confidence even when circumstances may seem challenging or uncertain. We have faith that the air we breathe exists. We don't see it but we know that there's air. And even though it is invisible to our naked eye, we do know that it exists. And if you don't believe it, I dare you to hold your breath any length of time and see what happens. 
When you sat on that pew today, you sat in faith believing that that pew would hold you up. Nobody examined it. Nobody looked at it to see if it was sturdy. Nobody looked at it to see if it had a crack. But, but you sat down in faith. You sat down in faith believing that this seat would hold you up because this is what you do every week. You come in. You sit down. You don't, you don't know if it will support your weight. You don't know if it's going to break. But you sit down even though there's no guarantee of the stability of that pew. But you sat down on it. But let's just say, for example, you sat down and the pew collapsed. The disappointment of the pew now collapsing will cause uncertainties about any seat that you sit in. Because no matter where you sit now, because you collapse on that other seat, you will check the chair before you sit down again. You're not going to just sit down again because that same seat failed you last Sunday. So this week you're going to check it to make sure that somebody repaired it before you sit down again. Because now your conscience now tells you that, that there's a possibility that every time you sit, you've got to check a chair. So the next time you go to sit, you'll check. And then because of that, you'll lose confidence on the ability that this chair is able to hold you. But faith says, no matter how many times I sit on this pew, no matter how many times it collapses, faith said, I'm going to sit and this pew will hold me up. And it won't happen again. Persistency, being uh, sure that the challenge of your difficulties, sitting on a broken pew, unwavering in your faith in the face of adversity, shows resilience and determination to be steadfast. Trusting God even when the pew looks unstable. Believing in the place where you trust and confidence or have confidence in something. It means to fully trust in God's promise, the truth of his word, and knowing that he has the ability to do whatever it is that he said that he's able to do. Now, the Bible does not tell us this man's name. It does not give us how old his son is. It does not tell us how long his son has been dealing with this condition. But what he does tell us is that he has an issue which possesses, well, possessed by a spirit that caused him to have seizures and to be unable to speak since childhood. So childhood typically considered to be from birth up until teen. And once a child reaches 13, they're considered adolescents. So give rise to the idea that this child has been dealing with this, or his son has been dealing with this from a long time, an early age, which gives rise to the idea that sometimes when you deal with something for so long, you don't know if you can continue to trust God because you believed him three years ago, but here we are six years later, and we're still dealing with the same issue. Sometimes problems is not so recent, but it it does suggest that coming at an early age means that this father perhaps had reached a place in his life where I just can't take it anymore. Enough is enough. This man's been dealing with this situation for his son for a long time, and all he wanted to do was to get his son healed. This man wanted his son to be healed, realizing it was time for help. So he goes to where he thought that help would be. Struggling with his faith didn't mean that he didn't believe because he did. The mere fact that he went for help shows that he wanted help. But the fact that he was looking for help, it shows that he believed in people that he thought would be able to do. But the disciples were not able to heal this man. Now, he could have easily gone home and said, you know what? Y'all can't do it. Let my son go let's go home and do what he did but every episode of this boy is enough for this father to feel like I gotta understand what's happening and so while I'm not understanding what's happening I begin to question my faith faith will coexist with questions you can still believe but you still have questions You can still trust, but you'll still have questions. You can still ask God to do some things, but you will still have some questions. When those disciples wasn't able to heal his son, Jesus expressed his disappointment and the lack amongst them, and he said, oh, faithless generation. People of God, brothers and sisters, saints of God, believing matters. You have to believe no matter what it looks like, no matter how difficult it seems, no matter how hard it 
trying, you got to believe God for the very work cert. When they brought the boy to Jesus, the evil spirit still came up. Give rise to the idea, I say that a lot, Bishop says that too. Give rise to the idea that the spirit was about to challenge Jesus to show that he wasn't going to be able to do what he said he would do. So he comes out in front of Jesus. But the Bible says that when this boy, this spirit comes out of this boy, he falls on the ground and he starts foaming at the mouth. And the father now seeing this happening all over again. It's happening in front of the man that I know can heal. It's, it's happening in front of disciples that I know that could not heal. It's happening. Enough is enough. And this father is built up with the fact that his son is constantly dealing with something that he couldn't do. He's standing by aimlessly watching his his son suffer for something that he could not heal. So the father asks, if you can do anything, have compassion, have pity, not only on my son, but have some pity on me. Because I've seen what he's going through, Mother Cooper, and I can't do nothing about it. I've seen how he's going through all of these transforming things, and, and I can't do nothing about it. So, God, have a little pity on my son, but while you're having pity on him, have some pity on me. How many of us know that in spite of what our children go through, God, we need you to have some pity on us? He said, have compassion on me. Have compassion in my distress. Have some compassion in my disappointment. Have some compassion in my desperation. Do it for us, Lord. Just show us a little pity. I'm, I'm not asking you for much, but just a little pity for me and my son. I'm, I'm dealing with a situation and I'm dealing with an issue that my son cannot deliver himself from. But God, if you can do it, he said, if you are able to do it, just have a little compassion. You don't have to do a big deal but just a little bit will get it done I want to remind a few of you that just a little bit is all you need and God will get it done I want to remind a few of you that even when you bring it to Jesus when the enemy decides to cut up God is still able to deliver Jesus responds that if you can't believe I can do anything but can you believe me to do it can you trust me to do what you've asked me to do? do? Do you believe that I'm able to do it? Because all things are possible to him that believe it. Do you believe? Now, the word if there expresses condition. Uh, if you can believe in order to receive a miracle, you got to believe. Now, if you reflect on this month, we started the year off with the release, God's release. In order for the release to come, Leslie, you got to believe. Then we went down to obedient, being obedient and obeying God. So in order to do, to get God's release, you have to obey what God is telling us. Then we went down to tearful trust, where sometimes you cry in situations, but you trust still. We cry about a lot of things, and we still trust. Uh, and so today, the Lord brings us to believing matters because I want to do some things for you, but I want you to believe. I want to comfort you while your daughter is away, but I just need you to believe. I, I, I want to make you feel sure that while she's away, I'm still covering her. You just have to believe. It looks like she's far away. I can't get to her like I want to, but if you would just believe and you would just help me trust you, a little while longer God will be with her so the Bible says that that he says to this man if you can believe I can do it but can you believe me I can make it happen but can you believe it I can take what's impossible and make it possible but can you believe me I can turn some things around, but can you believe me? Can you believe me when it looks like all the odds are against you? Can, can you believe me that I am God and there's nothing too hard for me? Can you believe me when it looks like you are get the, uh, getting ready to get a dispossessed, but God will turn that note around and change things for you? Do you believe that even when you get to the bank and there's an overdraft as you look on your phone, but once you get to the bank, there's some money in your account? Do you? You believe that there are bills that are piled up that you don't know how you're going to pay? Do you believe that he can do it? Can you trust him? 
The Bible says that this man, he cries with tears. And I thought about when I read that last week, the tears of a tearful trust. He's crying to God, yet trusting him. He's crying to God in his frustration because I don't know what else I can do. I've, I've done all I can do. This, this boy has been dealing with this condition from a young age. But God, now I bring him to you. Can you do something for me? I, I'm, I'm tearfully trusting you. I'm, I'm crying out from the depth of my belly. God, can you do something for this helpless son? The Bible says that this man cries, and even in his tears, he's still willing to trust God in difficult circumstances, crying yet believing. Immediately, the Lord, I believe God. He cries, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. On one hand, he acknowledges his belief, but on the other hand, he recognizes that he needs God's help. Sometimes we need to ask God, Lord, some things that we've doubted you for, but if you would just help my unbelief. I, I don't mean to doubt you because I, I know that you're able. I, I know that you have the ability, but sometimes, God, I doubt what you're able to do. But if you would just help my unbelief, God, I want to be helped in my unbelief. I don't mean to not trust you. I don't mean not to, to believe other things, but I want you, God, to help me in my unbelief. What causes unbelief? Sometimes we don't believe because it seems like it's taking forever. God has promised me so many things and it's not happening. But now I'm not believing that it will happen. But sometimes we let people talk us out of our blessing. You believe God to do that? Are you crazy? God's not going to do that. You need to stop believing God for that. But doubt will cause you to fear and not believe this man said God I believe but if you can just help this unbelief I, I, I've been dealing with this boy he's falling into the fire he falls into the water and I know that you're able because I've, I've seen your works I've seen what you've done in the past I know that you're able but God I believe you but help that part of me that doubts you help that part of me that when I became discouraged, I wanted to give up. Help that part of me that says you're not going to be able to do it. But God, I'm asking you for help. I'm asking for your help. In my stupidity, God, help me. In my misunderstanding, God, help me. When I need to forgive you others, God, you help me. Help God my unbelief. I'm struggling with believing that you're going to supply my needs. I, I know what your word says, but I struggle to believe that the angel of the Lord will descend and make things happen. Uh, I'm struggling, God, with the angel saying that you're able to do it. But if you would help my unbelief. He believed God to heal the son. But because of the struggle, because of the disappointment, there crept up a little bit of unbelief. God, I'll trust you to the end. And in spite of my unbelief, in spite of my disappointment, Lord, I trust you. He recognizes that his unbelief was existing. Sandy, sometimes we got to be honest with God and let him know that we're struggling with what we're struggling with. Sometimes we got to be honest with God and say, God, I know what you said, but it just don't look like it. Sometimes we got to tell God, God, you said this, that, or the other, and it seems like you've forgotten all about me. And so that helps us to have some unbelief. But, but if you can just believe, Bible says that all things are possible. No matter what you need, it's possible. No matter what you want, it's possible. No matter what you need me to do, it's possible. Uh, God, I believe. I, I, I believe I've gone through some struggles where I didn't know if God was going to come through. But I held to the rain, to the horns of the altar, and I believed that God will do just what he said he would do. It didn't look good all year. It didn't sound good all year. Everywhere I turned was distraction. Everywhere I went somebody made me know that God hasn't done it. But I stood on the fact that God I believe you 
And whatever it takes, whatever you want to do, God, I'll tell you, yes, I look like I'm falling apart. But God, if you hold me together, God, if you speak to my mind, if you speak to my spirit, I know everything's going to be all right. I'm going through a season where I couldn't see my way through the storm. I'm going through a season of unbelief, doubting God, hearing them every week, coming to the church. God said this, God said that, but yet every week, everything God was saying looked like it wasn't going to happen. Wondering, God, is that for me? Wondering, God, did I hear you? God, did you say what you said you said? But today, I acknowledge today I stand firm on the fact that I've struggled in unbelief but God if you help me God if you deliver me God if you give me another chance I'll trust you till the day I die if you just do it again I'll trust you when I can't trace you God if you speak I'll trust you, even when unbelief wants to creep up. God, I said, I believe and I trust you. Unbelief will make you feel like that baby is not going to be what he said it was going to be. Pastor, I remember when, when Evan was born, before Evan was born, the word of the Lord was that Evan was going to be this, that, and the third. And all of a sudden, now the baby is born a pound, and he's in the incubator. And it looked like what God said months before he was born, that it could not be. So that was a very good reason to fall into unbelief because God a few Sundays ago you said and now my baby is lying in the incubator but I'm here to tell you today that the baby that the enemy thought that made me unbelieve God the Bible said help thou mine unbelief Evan today is a nice handsome strong boy educated and smart to follow instructions and do what he needs to do despite of the fact that he was born just one pound and when you're born at one pound sometimes it don't look like things are going to happen but his mother went to the hospital every day trusting God that you said this boy would be this, that, and that. And you said this boy would do this, that, and the other. And God, he's laying here. He only a pound. But you said, Melissa, I don't know if she had any unbelief. I don't know if she was doubting what God had promised. But every day she went. And every time she can touch him, she put a prayer over his life. And one day I went and I said, God, this is your promise. You spoke a promise over this boy life and we believe you for miracles. I want you to know that even in your unbelief, he's able, he's able, he's able that in my unbelief, sometimes it looks stupid, but he's able. Sometimes we act crazy, but he's still able. Unbelief or belief, but he's able. I, I've come to tell about 10 of you that God is able when it looks crazy. He's able when you don't see it. He's able when you don't understand it. He's able. You see, parental love means, Courtney, it means protection. But there's nothing that you won't do for Sire. No place you won't take him, no, no amount of money that you won't pay to make sure he's okay. Because that's what parents do. And, and, well, not all parents, but, but, but Christian, godly parents. Because that woman that took her baby in freezing weather to, to Walmart naked, all the baby had on was a pamper and, and, and no clothes. But the people in the store bought clothes for him. So, so it's not all parents will do what's right. But, but, but when your child is in distress, when your child is in pain, 
when you walk the floor all night long saying, God, I believe you to heal, sire. When you walk the floor all night long, not knowing what's going to happen. Ah, God, I trust you when I can't trace you. Sometimes we don't understand. But whenever, whenever your child is in a painful, distressful situation and it looks crazy, you just got to believe. And if you can just hold to faith. Some of you might be dealing today with disappointment. But I've come to remind you, just hold to your faith. Some of you may be able to say that, God, I don't know. I've struggled in unbelief. But I want to remind you today that God says, just hold on. Uh, if you can help me, if all things are possible, then certainly he can help in our unbelief. Ah, God, I thank you for even the times that I did not believe. I'm actually thanking God for the times that I needed him to restore my faith. Mm, God, I thank you. Some of us have been waiting on God for some things that God has promised. We've been waiting on houses and cars and monies and, and children's deliverance and, and, and jobs and, and different things of that nature. And some of us are even waiting on the more of God, waiting for God to do some spectacular things, waiting on God to move in our lives, waiting on a greater anointing, waiting on a fresh oil, waiting on God to have his way. No matter how disappointing it might look to you, no matter how long it's been, if you can just hold to the faith if you can just believe God even in the fire the fire is burning but God I trust you the house looks like it's gonna go down but God I trust you I'll never forget there was a fire next door to Auntie Fan's house the house was totally in flame but no smoke no flames nothing came to her house because she said God I believe you to protect the little that I have if you trust God know that he's gonna bring you out I want to remind you that in our time of unbelief that he's able and he will do that which is impossible so whatever it is that seems impossible God said to tell you today believing matters if you can just believe it matters what I'm about to do if you can trust me, it matters. <laughs> it matters. Josh, it matters. No matter how difficult it looks, no matter what the doctor's report is, it matters. You got to believe God when it's cloudy. We often say that there's light at the end of the tunnel. But if you can believe God in a dark space, and how many of us have been in some dark spaces in our lives? Sometimes we don't even feel like getting up. Sometimes we don't even want to talk to anybody. One of my daughters texted me this morning and she said, I'm in a dark place, Bishop, and I don't know what to do. She said, I'm not suicidal, but I'm hurting and I need God to intervene. And my simple request back to her was, you got to believe God. No matter what the job is doing, no matter what's going on in your life, you got to believe God and when things look dark and when things look dreary and when you're about to give up and you want to quit I heard God said tell pilgrim believing matters I said that this is the year of God's release not emails release not Deborah's release but it is the release of God Watch, pray and see what I'm getting ready to do I'm opening up the windows of heaven and I'm pouring out blessings that you have not room enough to receive. Yes, you've been waiting, but wait a little while longer. And while you're waiting, just believe. And while you're believing, just wait and trust God and know that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. What is it that you want God to do? Just ask me. Can't thou believe? He made a mistake. He said, can you believe? He said, God, can you do what I'm asking you to do? But God turned around and told him, can you believe what you need me to do? This boy from a childhood, Kayla has been sick 
from a childhood, he's struggling with the spirit. And here I bring my son. And God, if you can just have compassion, have, have some pity, have a little mercy. Because it don't look good on this end. Don't look good of what's getting ready to happen. But if you can just have some pity on this boy, I believe that everything's going to be all right. Everybody's standing. Oh, God. Believing matters even when you're struggling with unbelief because faith can coexist with unbelief. Faith can still work when you're struggling to believe. And all it takes, see the Bible says that he gave us a measure of faith. He said there's a faith as a grain of a mustard seed. But watch what God said to the disciples later on in the verses in the chapter. He said, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. Give rise to the idea that the disciples weren't doing much praying and fasting. Because when you hang out with Jesus, you do what he does. And it should never be a time that the church has to say, I'm calling the church on a fast. But there should be a personal relationship with you and God where he'll lead you to turn your plate over, where he'll lead you to fast and to pray because there's nothing worse than being in a relationship with Ryan and Ryan and I don't talk. There's nothing worse than being in a relationship and I don't get to see Ryan. So if we have to fix our earthly relationship, surely you have to fix your heavenly relationship. Surely God wants to hear from us while we're driving, while we're walking, while we're running, while we're in the gym. I told somebody this morning that I'm determined now that during my devotion time is going to be my time to do my exercise. 30 minutes on the treadmill in the morning while I'm talking to God, while he's strengthening me, while I'm asking him for some things that only he has the ability to do. So we have to build our relationship with God to kill our unbelief. If there's anyone here today that does not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you don't know Jesus, you don't know the man that you need to have a relationship with, you can come now. Although it's raining on the outside, God sends the latter rain of his presence in the house. If you don't know Jesus, you can come. We represent every age up here on this altar. So if you feel like only the old people can come to Jesus, I want you to know that there are some young people that love God too. Only thing that matters is you have to believe. And if there be not one, put your hands together and thank the Lord. I want to thank you. I want to announce today that one of the daughters of this ministry will be leaving us and today would be her last day. She's relocating to Texas without her mother, without her father. Come Serena and come Courtney and come Kayla. So I've asked Courtney and Kayla to come that they can pray with you as you go. That you never forget who Jesus is. And not only who he is, but what he means to you. Represent, have a relationship. Pray, seek directions. Seek direction, seek directions. Don't move until God gives you direct answer on what to do. I know that your mom and your dad will be worried, but you have to assure them that you're going with God and that you will be safe. So I want these two young ladies to pray for you. Come to the middle. Come to the middle. And we send you off covered. And we send you off covered. And we send you off with God's grace on your life. Find a church that preaches the word 
You're not going out there looking for a relationship. And if it happens, let it happen. But let it happen under the favor of God. We cover you in prayer. We cover you in Sandy, come stand behind her. And Minister Pete, come stand in front of her. We cover you in prayer. This might be one of the hardest decisions that you make with your life. God, is this you? God, did I hear you correctly? I'm reminded of a text in the Bible where Abram, the Lord spoke to him. And you got to understand that Abram didn't have a relationship with God. There's nothing in the Bible that said that Abraham knew God or Abram knew God. Abram was brought up under idolatry. They were idol worshippers. But God told him to leave his country, leave his kindred, leave his family, and go to a place that I will show you. Abraham had no idea where God was sending him, but because he heard God, because he had a relationship that made him believe the voice of God, he went. And I don't know what's in store for you in 2024 in Texas, but I do know that we send God with you. I don't know where, but I know he'll be there. I don't know when, but I know he'll step in. I don't know how, but I know that you are covered by the prayers of your parents. It is going to be difficult leaving your girls until you can be situated and, and properly situated and, and be able to take them on. But, but, but I send prayers with you. We, we cover you in this house with, with prayer. We, we cover you. Thank you for your faithfulness, how you served with fresh fire. Thank you for the times that you drove by yourself and went home late at night and God watched over you. But thank you for the time that you spent in ministry, times of prayer, times of loving God. Keep that same relationship and don't allow the enemy to divide you. Don't, don't worry about clubs and, and dances. You know, we got to be careful now because we're doing that stuff in the church. But, but keep your mind on. On Jesus go with God and allow God to be with you I speak in your life I speak a covering of God I speak the favor of God that the things that you stand in need of that there will be no hindrance that there will be no blocks that there will be no hindrance that there will be no blocks that when you go go in the name of God speak what he gives you to speak and favor go with you 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 I pray I pray I pray in the name of Jesus Adrian, come down. Those of you that are standing, point your hands in Serena's direction. This is a big move. You're going to a state where you've never lived before, and you're going without your parents. She served with you, right? Yes, sir. Come on down. Pastor, she served with you, too. She may not have been the best little servant, but she served with you. <laughs> and so we honor God for you today, Serena. Who feels led to pray? Get the mic. Kayla, get the mic for me, please. And pray for her as she goes. This, she said, is her last Sunday here in the church. But it's not your last Sunday with God. Take God with you. Take him with you. Kayla, pray. One, one second before Kayla pray. I heard God say that the priest of her house has to release her. And I know, I know, I hear your heart right now. I hear. I, I'm a father also. I know what it means. But as Bishop was talking. And I wasn't going to, I was ignoring God. You've been ignoring God all morning. <laughs> Jesus. Ignoring God. Yeah, I, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. You've been you. ignoring you. It was a fight. But fight no more. Here, go. Speak the word of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. 
Suck up your tears, Mr. P. Yeah, because you as the priest, not, not the prophetess, not the intercessor of the house, but you as the priest of the house have to send her where she needs to go with a blessing. We cannot do that. No, sir. You have to lay hands, and I know it's going to go against everything that is against your fatherly Give heart. But God said, let's lay your hands on her belly, and as Kayla is praying, you are going to release her. And watch this, because of the Father's anointing, an angel is going with her today. An angel is going to be sent for her when she gets it. Because of the Father's anointing. Kayla, you can pray now. Father, we thank you for the life of Serena. God, we lift her up to you. God, we thank you for this move to Texas. God, we thank you for being her Jehovah Jireh, that you will provide every need according to your riches and glory. God, we thank you for protecting, protecting her mind, protecting her yes in this season. Father, as she moves, Father, protect her yes to you. Father, we say yes to your will and yes to your way. God, we thank you that your favor will follow her. Father, order her, her footsteps. Father, your word says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So Father, we thank you for her faithfulness. We ask God that you would reward her faithfulness for the nights that she cried, for the nights that her heart was broken. God, we thank you that you are rewarding her faithfulness. So God, not just to this ministry, but to you. So Father, we thank you for faithfulness. God, we thank you for favor. That favor will be her portion, that she will not have to want for anything. But God, we rebuke the plan of the enemy that will try to bind her mind, that will try to bind her heart. That on the name of Jesus, we rebuke every plan, every plot, and every scheme of the enemy, but God, we thank you that she is walking into who you have called her to be. God, we thank you that she is walking in confidence and boldness into her purpose, into her purpose, into your plan, into your assignment. So, Father, we thank you for your covering. We thank you that you would cover her, God. Give her what to do. Give her how to do it in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you are going to do exceeding abundantly above all she can ask or think. So, Father, we thank you that you are going to blow her mind. We thank you that you are going to blow her mind. We break the spirit of fear. We break the spirit of fear, but we speak provision. We speak breakthrough. We speak breakout. We speak breakthrough and we speak breakout. No fear can live here. No fear can live here, but Father, cover her. Cover her. We pray for your protection. We pray that you would send angels to Texas even now. We pray that you would send angels to Texas even now. We pray that you would send angels to Texas even now. Cover her door. Cover her door. Cover her bedpost. In the name of Jesus, we bind depression. We bind anxiety. We bind everything that was trying to hinder her moving you. But God, we say thank you. 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 We are binding everything that the enemy thought he would do for evil. But Serena, you're going to live. Serena, you're going to go forth. Serena, you're going to live. In the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and we say thank you, and we say thank you, and we say thank you, we say thank you for every promise, for you are a God that will not lie, you will not let your word return unto you boys, so Father we say thank you, we glorify you, and we end this prayer with a praise, hallelujah, 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 halleluj